So you just got your first 3D printer and things just aren't sticking to the build surface. It's one of a couple of options most likely. One, your bed is dirty and needs to be cleaned. Or two, your printer is out of level or more specifically, out of tram. I've got one of the most popular 3D printers here that does not have auto bed leveling. So we can run through this together. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here and you're new to 3D printing, make sure to leave a like and get subscribed. If you have found this video, it likely means that you're having issues with your first layer sticking. There are two basic reasons for this. One, your bed is dirty, and if that's the case, get yourself some isopropyl alcohol and a paper towel and get that cleaned up. Now, in most cases that will work, but make sure that your bed is compatible with alcohol because some out there aren't. There are two schools of thought when it comes to bed leveling though, and more specifically bed tramming, which is leveling on multi-axis. This is definitely not the second time that I'm filming this video because I found a really dumb problem with Enders. If you have put a new micro SD card into your Ender 3 and it's not working, check to make sure it's not above 32 gigs, because if it is, it's not going to read. Ask me how I know. Anyways, enough of needlessly unwarranted, unnecessary frustration when it comes to Enders and big shout outs to Zern Zero and Omaha 3D Prints from our Discord. Thank you both for your assistance in figuring out why I'm an idiot but really, it's Creality's fault and not too much other. But there are two schools of thought here for bed leveling. We have Mr. Old School right here with the white paper that just easily gets you about 0.1 millimeters the offset. And New Hotness right here, the Filament Friday Auto Leveler tool. Old and busted, New Hotness. Now, I am going to be doing a video coming up with my brother. We're going to see who can level a printer faster. If it's better for him with the new school way or me with the old school way, I have a feeling he's going to suffer less frustration than I will. And there is a big reason why we don't use printers without auto leveling in the company anymore. It's just not worth it from a business case. And if you do want to see business focused videos as well as videos where we upgrade enders, let me know in those comments down below because those are things I'd like to do more of, but if you guys aren't going to want to watch it, then hey, I'll do other videos. I've got plenty of them. Thank you all for your support in that as well. We've got here the Filament Friday Auto Leveler, which is pretty darn cool, but it's really simple in what it is. It's a button cell battery, a little momentary switch, and a resistor and an LED a 3D printed part. Very, very simple piece on a printed circuit board, nice little sticker, real nice bit of kit. But what it does is it takes all the guesswork out of the old school way. You'll see when I do the old school way that it is very much about feel, which I can't easily show you guys through the internet. So you're just gonna have to kind of trust me on it. Now, according to Chep, you don't have to do this hot. Well, I prefer to do any bed leveling when my printer is warm. That way the bed itself is fully warped or up to temperature that I would be printing at. Normally doing it to PLA temps are fine, but if you're gonna be doing a lot of ABS where you're running closer to 100 degrees centigrade, I might go ahead and level out to 85C or even 90C. 85C is normally the preset for PETG, so just check with your printer, and if not, go ahead and do it manually. One thing to note is you will want to make sure that your nozzle is clean for all of these. Now, in the case of the Filament Friday leveler, it's a PCB, so it should be fine. It'll just kind of squish the filament out of the way. In the case of the paper, it might cause a problem, but it must be warm. If you have a cold nozzle and you are trying to level out, you're going to have a bad time. So I prefer to do it when it's all warm. So I have removed the screen from the printer it would normally be here. That way I can look at it, but you guys have a better view of everything going on. So let's go into print and let's go ahead and do the G code for CHEP. Okay, with CHEP's leveler, it's gonna go ahead and get everything into place for us. Do note, you must do this fast because you only have 20 seconds in between every point. You could always run it a second time, don't worry. Now we are supposed to adjust right until the LED lights up. Oh, okay. Well, okay. Pretty happy with that. Let's go back here. Same deal. Always got to check to make sure you're going the right direction. Okay. 
Oh, we're just moving the whole friggin' thing with us. That's a bit of a pain, but that's more on me, not on them. Okay, and we're gonna do this one more time just to be safe. Should be a pretty easy thing to do. Now coming up again to the front. You will want to do this multiple times just to be safe. Is it necessary? No, it's not, but it will give you generally a better result. So there we go. This was very fast, very easy to understand. So I can't really complain. It's pretty great. All right, we are now going to do it my way. We're gonna see if Chep's tool gets us nice and close. Now I'm gonna cheat a little bit and just get this piece of paper right where I need it to be. All right, now we're gonna check Chep's work. We're gonna see if it looks good. We're gonna go ahead and home. Now, mind you, this is my first time using this and I first time ever using it. And I did it on camera because I don't know, apparently I'm weird like that, but I like it. It's a really nice system. So let's see if I like it. I think that's way too close personally. So for me, this piece of paper is stuck in there. If I was to pull it out, I'm gonna rip the paper. I could be misusing this. I probably need a little bit more experience with the tool itself, but I will tell you it's a lot easier than doing it my way. So let's take a look at doing it the old school way, which is with the piece of paper. To do that, you're just going to adjust the wheel until the paper becomes just barely touching. Now, it's gonna be one of those feel things. Now, Chep got it real close. I will say we're probably within a quarter millimeter or better. For some of your prints, that might be just fine. For others, it might not be. So we're then gonna go ahead and move it to the back. Now, now, my assumption is right here, it is way too tight. I cannot move that at all. Same deal though, pretty easy thing to deal with once you get it sorted. Okay, and then... You want it to just barely grab. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now back on this side, we can see it's pretty good. I'm, I'm happy with that. So we're gonna go ahead and run Chep's tester. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I got a little bit of filament in here because I had removed it earlier. I'm gonna go to print, and we're gonna go into the Ender 3 squares. This print time shouldn't be too bad, but we're gonna see how it looks. Now, personally, I would run a Benchy with a really big brim, which I do have on here as well. And the goal for that Benchy is for us to understand, do we have a level bed? We'll see how these squares look. I'm very curious. Ooh, I think I'm a little bit too far away. Chep, I think you have it, sir. I am too far away. I think Chep's leveler was better than mine. We're just gonna stop this print because we don't need to do it anymore. We know that it's not right. Gonna remove the filament out of the machine itself. Gonna go ahead and clean off the bed. All right, Chep, you got me, man. Is old school worse than new school? So far, it looks like it. Let's do Chep's one one more time. Shouldn't be too bad. Should be able to get this done pretty quickly. See, I just how sensitive this thing is. Literally me touching it is enough. Something to note, and it's something that you'll see me do, is the way that you turn the knob might not make a ton of sense. So I'd normally have to put my head up and then pretend I'm actually turning the knob. So I will want to go this way to tighten it, which pulls the bed away. So if I'm a little too close, I can move the knob and pull the bed away a little bit. But if you're a little too far and need to move it closer, you go in this direction because that is anti-clockwise for me. So one more time, we're gonna wipe down the bed because I have touched it a little bit. Let's see if new school just completely wipes the floor with old school because it looks like it might. Gonna do the under square test. And we'll see. Now, unfortunately, the system isn't fully purged yet, so that's gonna take a minute or two. There it is, it's printing. This is a really nice little test print. It makes things pretty easy to understand, even for me. Now, if my bed would just stick to stuff. It's the right distance, it's just things aren't sticking to it. Welcome to Creality. Sometimes things just don't stick. I feel reasonably confident enough to just go ahead and run a Benchy. <laughs> Chep's leveler says it's good. I think it's close enough. So we're gonna go ahead and run a Benchy. Again, one more thing to do. Wipe the bed down with a little bit of alcohol. Let's see how this works. Now me, I like to level when it's actually printing. So I've put a 30 millimeter brim. We'll cut to that footage so you guys can see it. Looking at the Ender 3 V2 in Prusa Slicer, we got a Benchy loaded in because that's what we're gonna print. 
but I'm gonna make one slight adjustment. We are gonna go brim width maybe 30. That is gonna give us plenty of time to adjust this manually. The brim will always be done first before the actual print itself runs. This is important and something that you want to do. If you do suspect that your bed is warped in the center, this is a great way to work that out. Right, Victoria? Hey, right? Yes. What a good girl. The goal of this brim is so that you can slowly level the machine as the brim is working. And if the brim doesn't look good, who cares? You've got 30 millimeters of it to work with. It increases the print time significantly, but that's okay. I really have no intention of letting it go past the first couple of layers. But this is the thing about bed leveling. It's not always all that straightforward. A lot of it is a game of feel. And whether you're the old school type that just likes to know what it feels like because they know their printer, or you're one of the new school that likes to have a little bit of assistance when they can, bed leveling is one of those things that will make or break a 3D print. Let's see how good this level actually is. Now for me personally, I like to kind of get right at the level of the nozzle and just check to see how it's doing. Now all I'm gonna do is just kind of get everything set. I think Chep's tool got it pretty darn close and I think we will end up with a first layer that looks like glass. Now the nice thing is we got plenty of time to tune in this brim and get it to a point where everything looks and feels good. So as we're running this first layer test, let me know what you guys think down in those comments below. Are you a new school method where you want to get one of these Filament Friday kits? Links, of course, in that description. Or are you an old schooler that likes to use the paper? I'd love to know your thoughts down below, but I hope if you are new to 3D printing, this has helped you out. And of course, Patreon members, I hope you guys enjoyed my frustration as I struggled with literally a memory card issue. But I'm looking at a pretty clean first layer, which tells me... Chep's tool, A+. Plus. Other than this filament being a little damp, it's been out here for about eight months. This print is looking pretty darn good. We've got it being a little too close in this back corner, so I'll be adjusting it as we go. But I would say this thing does a great job. So kudos to Chep and Filament Friday, because this thing is a great tool. And for 25 bucks, it takes a lot of the guesswork out of the paper itself. I hope this has helped though, because yeah, the paper is a bit of feel. And while this is as well, there's a visual indicator where this is very much a texture you have to feel for it. So what are my thoughts on all of this? Well, I think Chep's leveler is great. And I believe if you're struggling with bed leveling, it's a great tool to help you get there. Realize it's more of an art than it is a science. It's all about feel, even with this kit. It's about getting it so the light just barely turns on and isn't on too much. With the paper, it's about making sure that it just barely grabs and not grabs too much. And if you are struggling with that bed leveling, you can of course look at upgrading to an auto bed leveling system. We'll link to some in that description for you as well, but it will vary on your printer, so, you know, look into that. But don't worry, bed leveling is one of those things that you will spend a lot of time on in the beginning, but when you're a little bit further down the road, you're gonna look back and say, wow, was it really that hard when I first started? The answer is yes, and it's totally okay. I would have had to do adjustment with the paper. I barely had to do any with his tool, and it was just this back corner, which I think has more to do with me than it does to do with the tool. But guys, stay tuned, because coming soon, we're going to see if I can level a printer faster with the paper than my brother can with Chep's tool. And we're going to do a test print to see who did it better. That's all I got for you guys today. Stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. Let's go ahead and adjust that. Now we only have 20 seconds, so you gotta move nice and quick or it's going to be too late. It was too late. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do that again because I talked too much. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this video and a massive thank you goes out to all of our Patreon and YouTube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me. Thank you guys for everything that you do to make these videos possible. Remember, if you want to get your name listed in the wonderful lights right next to me as I'm doing these outdoors, you can join our Patreon or YouTube channel members at $5 or higher. Links, of course, in that description down below. Right below me will be my first look at this printer. No matter how much I may hate Creality and the things that they do, this printer is not a bad deal at the time. It is now. Right next to that will be my favorite printers under $500 for 2022, where this thing is dead 
last. I'll see you guys down in those comments and in the next one. Take care.